it was 2016 and material design was hot back then. Probably this project was actually hurting my portfolio more than helping it. And you can definitely tell that they were drawn on exactly the same day. It's important to always be ready and always be searching. It just sounds like you have a car and you're a fool. Oh, I just want to take it and correct it and put it all over again there. And I thought I was killing it with the flat design. Welcome to Design Hangout, a series where we talk all things design. Here's what's coming in today's episode. I'll show you my first UX design portfolio from around seven years ago. Not only to have a good laugh, but also so you can learn from my mistakes if you're creating a portfolio right now. We will talk about how to get hired as a UX designer, and I will share with you my three pillar system that will help get your dream job. Then we will talk about a very current topic, the September search, what it is, and if it's worth the excitement it usually brings. Let's start with diving into my very first UX design portfolio. To set some expectations, it was created in 2016, so around seven years ago. And at that time, I had been studying and doing some freelance UX design and graphic design work, but I haven't been working full time. And the goal of this portfolio was to land me my very first full time position. So let's go through the four projects that I had in detail, and then we will summarize the good and the bad things about them. So the portfolio was published on Behance, and since then I removed a lot of my UX projects from there. And I see that in my drafts, I still have two projects that were published in my original first portfolio, the Wonder Wallet app and the translation agency website. But you can imagine how it could look like with those small Behance thumbnails and those clunky case studies that were built basically by hacking the mechanism on Behance, by pasting the pictures instead of just using their builder. I didn't have a website back then. It really seemed overwhelming for me to create one. And from the time perspective, I think it was a big mistake. Behance is great for presenting visual work, but for the UX design, it's really lacking structure and very specific sections, especially when you're presenting something that needs to be seen on mobile. You're hacking those case studies. It doesn't really work very well. The first project is Carful. And honestly, I remember it being so cool. I was so proud of it. And now that I dug it out after so many years, I cringed even more than I expected. It was 2016 and material design was hot back then and I was so obsessed with it. And the whole portfolio is just material design, so lower your expectations. But maybe on the other hand, it wasn't such a bad thing because actually it got me hired because agencies back then were looking for people who knew material design. So, you know, it depends how you look at it. First of all, there's this name, Carful, and I don't know what I was thinking. Honestly speaking, it just sounds like you have a car and you're a fool. And no one told me about it back then. It's so embarrassing. And also, this is a project, it's like an example project for my portfolio. So I came up with the whole concept and unfortunately with the name as well. And there's also this tagline, as much as car will hold, like that's so embarrassing. I don't know what I was thinking. Okay, but moving on. So I explained the idea in the case study that it's basically a carpool app. And I even made a diagram, so it's not such a bad introduction here. And then I started sharing some styles like colors and basically a font, of course, is Robota font and some icons. And honestly speaking, it could use some headers. It could use some explanations so people at least know what they're looking at instead of jumping straight into the styles and, and some diagrams here. Then I showed some low fidelity sketches and that's a good idea, but I wish there was more explanation regarding what the problem is, what the goals of the projects are, what are the personas, etc. Instead of just jumping into basically UX flows. And also I wish I had some more annotations here so that people know what they're looking at. Also, I thought I was so authentic and raw by adding those sketches here. And today I would probably just use Excalidraw to make it feel like sketches, but actually be more readable because those are really not readable with my handwriting and just like, they are very rough. And I'll link the Excalidraw app in the description if you want to check it out. I really like it for sketches. Then I present a very basic flow and I think it's a step in a good direction. It even has a header and some description, so it's not so bad, but it doesn't have a key. And it's really hard to figure out if those are steps or actions or screens or what I mean here in general. I feel like in this very first portfolio, as a viewer, you need to just figure it out on your own. And that seems to be a theme here. Next, we have high fidelity designs. And honestly, I still quite like the color palette. I would definitely use it differently today, but it wasn't a bad base for the designs. And in general, I see that my problem back then was definitely storytelling because designs and the quality of designs were not so bad for a person who has 
little to no experience. It was more about how I'm presenting the designs and how I'm telling the story. And if I could improve the storytelling, I think that my portfolio would be just so much better. I think it would be so much better if I added some annotations and each section would be explaining the problem that I'm solving. Right now, it's just features that I've designed. We have a login, planning the trip, managing the trips, and then leaving a review, even some messaging and account view. There's a lot going on, but there is not much context and not much about my thinking in the background, basically. Another thing here is that it will be better to focus on just one flow, one feature. So for example, planning and executing the trip. And executing the trip seems to be something I totally forgot about in this case study, but just another story for another time. And such a large scope that I've chosen just made me brush over the features. And it's not very analytical. And this is what you're expecting from a UX case study, some analysis. So there's a lesson here that it's better to limit the scope of the UX case study and show more of your thinking, of your decision-making process. And also, practically speaking, you will have more case studies out of one product. So it's also better for you as a designer. And the cherry on top is the last section, illustrations for the empty states. And I thought I was killing it with the flat design and nobody could tell me nothing about my illustrations. And actually, they are very immature visually, like the shades, the shading that I used and the different sizes of strokes is just, just horrendous. But to defend myself, showing the empty states and showing some visual design capabilities was a really good idea. It's just about the execution that makes me cringe from the time perspective. Okay, I think we're done with the first case study of Carful, the app for fools who like basic flat art. But there is one more thing missing here, the metrics. So it would be great if I add to my case studies how I would measure the success of the project and if the goals were achieved. And of course, those are the example projects. So they are just imagined problems, but it would be great to speculate to at least show that I'm thinking about this business side. Another case study is Watcher, the app that allows you to see the movies and their showtimes in cinemas in a given location. So basically, it's what Google does by movie is just all wrapped together here. Again, we have no intro here, no project description, no goals, no personas, no audience, nothing. I just jump straight into the colors and the fonts. And actually, you can tell that from the reviewer's perspective, it positions this case study as a UI case study, not the UX case study. And it's really important to take a look at your case studies from the viewer's perspective and uh, notice those details. So, for example, that the introduction really matters. Then we have sketches, and you can definitely tell that they were drawn on exactly the same day as the sketches from another case study. And I was just completely pretending it was actual documentation. But I could have just at least changed the paper or the color of the pen. And also, I'm using millimeter paper for sketches that are completely not precise, which is another story for another time. Those sketches show the flow, but it's really hard to understand because there are no annotations and they are just my handwriting. And it's a very common mistake for junior designers that they are presenting the portfolio case study as if they were presenting it to themselves or to someone from their team who already knows the project. Then moving on to high fidelity designs, the logo is so bad, it makes me cringe again because there are so many mistakes in it especially the dashed line that will not be visible in small sizes at all i just want to take it and correct it and put it all over again there but anyway let's move on again we have material design here but this time it's a really basic execution and i definitely could have put more time into polishing the ui design so it doesn't look like i'm just creating a generic material design app using a library also, we have some annotations and we have the name on the screens, so that's a good thing. But again, we have no problem solving, no description, no context, nothing, just mockups. I'm not sure why, but some icons in this export are showing as rectangles. And I hope it wasn't like this in my portfolio, but I think it could have been. And overall, this design is a little bit boring. We have a lot of lists, very basic colors. There is nothing really eye catching and it feels a little bit like a filler for the portfolio. So the project that I wanted to add something, but I didn't have much time or I didn't want to put a lot of effort. And honestly, that could have been a case. I don't really remember. There is this filtering icon that I remember being so excited about. It looks like a filter icon, but it's cut in half. And from the time perspective, it's so confusing. But you know, you live, you learn. But back then I was so excited about it. 
And lastly, we have some illustrations for the empty states. And honestly speaking, the concepts are not bad, but the execution is really questionable. First of all, those are empty states, so the illustration shouldn't grab that much attention. The main focus should be on the action that the user needs to take to resolve the problem. And also in the search results, probably just a simple message that no results were found would really suffice here. Also, again, we have no metrics and no measuring of success at the end of this case study. Basically, this case study is only mockups and some colors. And honestly speaking, it's even worse than the previous case study because the other one at least had a user flow and a higher quality UI design. Now let's take a short break from analyzing those bad projects and let's talk about getting hired as a UX designer. And after that, we will come back to the remaining two projects. So you might want to stick around because the last one is the best one so far. So you can see a lot of progress and we will also summarize the good things and the bad things about them. When it comes to getting hired as a UX designer, there are three areas that you need to pay attention to. Skills, portfolio and interviews. And let's go through some recommendations for each one. There are core skills and there are complementary skills. And core skills are things like UX design, UI design, research, etc. So those are the things that you need to know and be really great at. But hundreds of candidates will have the same skill set, so it is not enough on its own. Then we have the complementary skills, and there are three categories of complementary skills that would be really useful for you as a designer. Visual, technical, and research and data analysis. And the whole idea here and the goal is to become sort of like a unicorn, someone who is really irreplaceable or really hard to replace with one other person because you have the skill set, but you also can have like a synergy of those skills that would be really difficult to achieve otherwise. Visual things are things like illustration, motion design, animation, or even very strong UI design skills. Technical skills are connected with programming, and in my opinion, all designers should know some basics of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. But if you decide to take it to the next level, or if you know another programming language, it would be really useful for you, especially when looking for jobs in companies that serve technical audiences. So for example, those ones that create tools for developers. Research and data analysis. And here you can start with really strong UX research skills and then learn things like market research, competitor analysis, how to analyze and organize data, and even learn about the infrastructure and databases. Basically, you're combining skills from the PM and data analysts. Choose whichever area feels closer to you and comes more naturally. The idea is to create this unique pairing. The second and a very important area is your portfolio. It's a must have for majority of jobs, at least for individual contributors, and it needs to be prepared right. A good portfolio is scannable, memorable, and concise. First, we have scannable. Your case studies need to be easy to consume. Use proper text hierarchy, so use headers, annotations, body text, bullet lists for your content, and short paragraphs. Avoid long walls of text. Overall, prepare your case studies for scanning and selective reading. It means that you don't need a lot of text, but when it's there, it needs to be high quality just in case a reviewer actually reads it. Also, use highlights for important information and pivotal moments in the project. Memorable. This is about using your personal brand to stand out while still keeping it relatively simple and not overdoing it. The content should be the center of attention, but having a really strong personal brand can make your portfolio memorable and more attention grabbing. Concise. When building your portfolio, it's really important to pay attention to synthesizing and distilling information. Before adding any details to your case study, you need to answer the question whether it adds to the story or it confuses the readers. The balance here is really important. If you want to learn more about building your portfolio, since it's a really wide topic, you can check out my free 5-day portfolio masterclass. I'll link it in the description. And also here, I'll link the portfolio playlist if you would like to see it. And the last area I would like to mention are the interviews. You need to get to know the types of the interviews that are present in the UX design recruitment process and prepare for them properly. Look for the questions that are the most popular and try to answer them in advance as well. If you would like to check it out on Outdoors Academy website, there is a waiting list for the course that is exactly about the interview prep. I link it in the description. Speaking of getting hired as a UX designer, I would like to mention the September search because we are in September right now. Some people say that in September, there is this rush to hire more people to fulfill the positions and even to open the new roles. 
And I've always want, been wondering why is that? It's maybe because people are coming back from vacation. It's easier to schedule the interviews. It's also because people are just paying more attention to work right now. And also because it's the last stretch before the holidays. So some companies want to fulfill the goals or they need more workforce before that. No matter the cost and whether or not the September surge will happen this year because of the state of economy, it's important to always be ready and always be searching, whether it's March, May or September. I made the mistake of not doing it earlier in my career. And honestly speaking, I let some opportunities slip because of it, because I felt comfortable in my current position. You need to always have your resume updated, your LinkedIn and portfolio updated as well. And you can even set up some alerts on the job boards or job websites that you're looking at uh, regularly so that you know what's going on. And after this break, let's come back to analyzing my very first embarrassing UX design portfolio. And let's figure out what are the lessons that are here for us. The next project is web design. And honestly speaking, I don't know why I've published it in my first portfolio since I was only looking for UX design jobs. And probably this project was actually hurting my portfolio more than helping it. And this is a lesson here that you need to align the projects that you're publishing in your portfolio with the work that you would like to do more of. This website is also material design like, of course, and it's really boring. And when I look at it and I compare it with my latest web design projects, it looks like a mid fidelity prototype that still needs a lot of love and attention from a visual designer. The good part is that I've presented responsive design for some more challenging sections. And there are some interactions, like for example, sending out the message. But anyways, I think we can move on to the next project because this one is not really that relevant to UX, to be honest. So the last project of this portfolio is Wonder Wallet. It's a budgeting app for travelers. And this is the only project in this UX portfolio that I did for actual client. And I felt it was big enough and good enough that I can actually put it in a portfolio. And again, starting with no introduction, no project description, absolutely no goals, no personas, nothing. And just jump straight into high fidelity designs because I felt they are so good. They speak for themselves, which is absolutely not true. When it comes to the presentation in this case study, again, we have basically no storytelling. We have some annotations that are quite good, but also we have some headers that are so skillfully placed that nobody would even notice them. On the good side, we have quite decent UI and UX design. I think, for example, this idea with the monthly budget and the progress bar and with this illustration for the empty state, those are quite good. I think there is a progress here. Of course, illustration is still very much an overkill, but comparing to other illustrations in my other case studies, at least this one is not obnoxious. There is some background pattern. There is some shading and colors that are quite nicely applied. So definitely it's better than the other ones. Then we have the adding the transaction section. And actually we have the color coding here for removing money from the budget, which is red and adding money to the budget, which is green. And it seems like a good idea at first, but then when you analyze it and given that the red green color blindness is probably one of the most popular ones. That really says a lot about how much I cared about usability at this point. Then I have some budgets, progress bars, even the talk editor, and some charts that are quite decently designed, I think. Overall, I see a lot of progress when it comes to the quality of UX and UI design, but there is definitely a low quality of storytelling still. I think even worse than in the other case studies, because here I just dropped the high fidelity designs and just called it a day without any sketches, without any flows any explanation whatsoever. It's truly really like pointless case study for me. Overall, my first UX portfolio was not good at all. It lacked storytelling and it just focused on the wrong things. But after all, it got me hired for my first UX design job. So I think maybe it wasn't so bad after all. Also, I think that the standards are a little bit higher today in the industry and styles have changed a lot. So let's take a look at the lessons learned so that you can apply them to your portfolio and have a better UX portfolio than I had back then. Publishing on Behance, it's a great platform, but it shouldn't be your main UX portfolio. It's better to have a website or a Notion portfolio so you can adjust the structure for UX case studies. You can use Behance as a social platform and publish your case studies there in addition to your website. So maybe you can find some freelance clients as well. 
lack of context. In my case, that is back then, I listed no goals, no project description, no personas, just nothing at all. And it's really important to set the scene and show your maturity as a designer by providing this information. And if you were to just take away one thing from today's video, is it would be to provide context at the beginning of your case studies. So provide the project description, list who you worked with, what was the platform, what were the goals, what were the problems, the challenges, who is it designed for, etc. No problem solution logic. I was just showing deliverables in my case studies without much context about what problem I was solving and why it was a good solution for this particular problem. And to be honest, it made the case studies really confusing and not that valuable. No storytelling. I didn't present the process at all, no key moments and no data. Overall, the case study should tell a story about your process, about important moments, about important challenges, and maybe some even pivotal situations if that's possible. No annotations around designs. I should have added more text and more context around my mockups just to help people understand what they are looking at. And it's a really common mistake for junior designers that they are just putting the mockups out there without any explanation or guidance on how to analyze them. And let's be honest, the reviewers will not take time to analyze the designs without any guidance. They will just move on to the next part of the case study. Styles with no context. I showed colors and some fonts in my case studies without explaining whether or not they are part of a design system. It put my case studies in a very immature and UI design category. The scope of the case studies was too wide. It's better to focus on a particular area or a feature instead of presenting the whole product. Overall, when presenting one feature, so for example, making transfers, there's enough information and enough UX challenges to solve there. When we're presenting the whole application, it basically makes us scratch the surface of every problem and we are avoiding this, this in-depth analysis. And lastly, my portfolio lacked variety. I presented only mobile projects that were based on material design and one web design project that was really not relevant to the job that I was applying to. If I wanted to add more variety, I should have presented maybe some web application designs. Or if I wanted to stick with mobile, I definitely should have added the iOS designs as well. But I also did some things right that you can do in your portfolio as well. First, I had four projects and well, really, it depends on how you look at it because this one web design project was not really relevant. So maybe I had three projects only. But anyways, the optimal number of projects that you should have in your portfolio is between four to five. If you go below four, you're presenting not enough information. And if you go above five, you're risking presenting your second best work. Using material design when it was in trend. So back then, material design was really popular. And the recruiter from the job that I eventually landed was really paying attention to it. So it maybe it was a good decision. Anyways, the portfolio needed more variety for sure. But if your portfolio feels up to date with the trends, it's definitely a good thing. Decent UX and UI design. I think that for a person with little to no experience back then, the execution was not bad for those designs. If I were to add storytelling to this portfolio and show a little bit more of a process, I think it would be a really good portfolio on a good level for a beginner. I wish I did, I did that back then, but overall the base was there. Illustrations and empty states. I think that it was a good idea to show my complementary skills in the portfolio back then. Those would be the skills from the visual design category. Of course, the execution on those illustrations could be better and how I place them in the designs as well. But overall, I think it was a good idea to just show that I'm not only focusing on UX and UI design, but also I have some additional skills. Thank you so much for joining the design hangout. I hope that you enjoyed it as much as I did. If you want to co-create the series with me, you can let me know in the comments what topics you would like me to cover in the next episodes. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon.